Since I've started this channel, I've read 10 Bob Shaw books. Bob Shaw actually was a new writer to me when I started the channel. I heard about this Northern Irish writer from Stephen E. Andrews, the outlaw bookseller. I started looking for his books in used bookstores and started reading them. I immediately connected with his wit and ideas. There always seemed to be something unusual or unexpected in his plots. At the same time, I was reading through the A Science Fiction Specials Series 1, and there are a couple of Bob Shaw books within that series. So I've now read most of Bob Shaw's work from the 1960s and 70s, but there was a short story collection, his first short story collection, which I had not read. Tomorrow Lies in Ambush by Bob Shaw, 1973. This is an Ace edition from United States. One of the things I love about some of the older Ace books is when they have interior illustrations. It was also published in the UK as a hardcover from Golanx. There are a couple differences though in the stories within. Both the Golanx hardcover and the Ace paperback were published in the same month. The Golanx edition was missing the stories Storm Seeker and Element of Chance. The stories that are included in the Ace paperback are Call Me Dumbo, from 1966, Storm Seeker, 1972, Repeat Performance, 1971, and Isles Where Good Men Lie, 1965, What Time Do You Call This, 1971, Communication, 1970, The Cosmic Cocktail Party, from 1970, The Happiest Day of Your Life, 1970, Element of Chance, 1969, The Weapons of Isher II, 1971, this is an homage to A.E. Van Vogt's The Weapons of Isher. Pilot Plant, a novella from 1966. Telemart III, 1970. And Invasion of Privacy, 1970. One notable absence from this collection is Light of Other Days. And that's because Ace had already published Other Days, Other Eyes, a fix-up that included that story. Some of these stories seem timeless, but there's others that are anchored within the time they were written. Some of the language and attitudes are directly from the 1960s. This is something that everyone who reads vintage novels or short stories understands. It's always interesting to look at these futures from 1960 with our eyes in 2024. Perhaps the most troublesome story in this regard is Call Me Dumbo. In this story, we have a protagonist whose husband and children are part of a ship that has come to colonize a world. They are stranded here and hopes for a future are slim. The husband is verbally abusive to his wife. He won't let her near the spaceship. In the beginning, we're not even sure if the protagonist understands that there is a spaceship. As our protagonist starts to remember some things and does explore the ship, we have our revelation of the story. Once again, this is Bob Shaw, and I don't think it goes exactly how you might imagine it. In repeat performance, we're introduced to a protagonist who is a theater owner, a movie theater. In the last performance on a Wednesday night, it appears that one of the bit stars in the movie is actually in attendance. He is dressed the same way he would be in the movie. This repeats itself week after week with different performers from different movies. The theater owner would love to talk to them, but can't seem to catch them as they leave the movie. He begins to suspect something is happening when one of the people is a person he knows has passed away. If you're familiar with John W. Campbell's Who Goes There, or Jack Finney's The Body Snatchers, you know where this story will be heading. But of course, Shaw takes it in a direction that is slightly off-kilter to their stories. The story and Isles Where Good Men Lie, is an invasion story of sorts, but it is an unusual one. Every two hours, an alien ship lands on Earth. A battle ensues and they destroy everyone in the ship. But this continues to happen over and over again in different locations on Earth. How long can this go on? Why is there a ship every 22 hours? Is this an invasion, or are these colonists? What Time Do You Call This is a story about a thief, a thief who thinks he can make the perfect getaway. He has a machine, a machine that doesn't travel in time, but it travels between parallel Earths. 
but perhaps the thief isn't thinking about what could happen or who could be there on a parallel earth as he tries to escape from a bank robbery. Let me tell you about one more story. Pilot Plant. This is the story of an aeronautic company that has invented a force field that acts as wings for their rockets and planes. This is highly experimental and there is a crash. Our protagonist barely escapes with his life. He decides this force field wing is something that they may have to discontinue because the safety record is of concern. Nobody would want to have an airline flight of people go down. But there are forces at play here which want this research to continue. He has another narrow escape with death. This time it's a meteor that comes down on the hotel cabin that he is supposed to be staying in. This is another story of aliens come to Earth. Why would aliens be trying to encourage this research on Earth? Bob Shaw's stories always have some interesting ideas and unexpected plot points. Perhaps I've been spoiled by other stories and novels by Bob Shaw, but I found these stories to be a bit mundane. These are his early stories. I've read a second collection from 1977, I believe, called Cosmic Kaleidoscope, which I thought was much better than this collection. If you're looking for Bob Shaw short stories, I would suggest you start with that one. For this one, I give it 6 out of 10. Now, if you are looking for this book, it may be a bit difficult to find. It was published by Ace in 1973, as well as Golanx in their yellow hardcover in 1973. There's a pan edition and another Golanx printing. Bob Shaw passed away in 1996, and since that time, we haven't been having any reprints of his books. I hope in the future that they will come back into print. Until next time, keep reading.